Many of you have heard the term cross-site scripting, but do you know how it works? Cross-site scripting has been one of the OWASP top 10 security risks since the list was created way back in 2003, and it remains on the list today. So all cybersecurity professionals should learn about this risk. I'm InfoSec Skills author John Wagnon, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how cross-site scripting attacks work. Cross-site scripting attacks are a type of injection where malicious scripts are sent to trusted websites. These attacks occur when an attacker uses a web application to send malicious code to a different end user. Flaws that allow these attacks to succeed are quite widespread and they occur anywhere a web application uses input from a user as a part of the output it generates without validating that output. There are actually several forms of cross-site scripting, usually targeting the user's browser. One is a reflected cross-site scripting, and this is the simplest variety of cross-site scripting. It happens when an application receives data in an HTTP request, and it includes that data in the immediate response in an unsafe way. Another is stored or persistent cross-site scripting, and this happens when an application receives data from an untrusted source, and then it includes that data in its later HTTP responses in an unsafe way. And the last is the document object model or DOM cross-site scripting. And this happens when an application contains some client-side JavaScript that processes data from an untrusted source in an unsafe way. This is usually done by writing data back to the document object model or the DOM. Cross-site scripting attacks target things like session stealing, account takeover, multi-factor authentication bypass, DOM node replacement or defacement, uh, tricking users into downloading malicious software, and even key logging. Here's an example. Let's say a user posts a status message on a vulnerable web application saying, hello world. The web application will display this message on the user's browser the way it's intended. But if the web application being vulnerable doesn't check for proper script insertion, then it could be fooled into running a malicious script that could do all kinds of bad things. Let's use a vulnerable social media site as another example. If a good user posts a status update, it might look something like this to the application. So in this case, there's a post to a form and sample post.php website using the HTTP protocol. The host there is socialsite.com. And you can see that the name of the user is John and the post itself is hello world, right? And that's the way it's supposed to work. But if the application is vulnerable and doesn't check against user input correctly, then an attacker could post something like this. So it's that same post against the same sample post.php website using HTTP. The host is still socialsite.com, but in this case it's vulnerable. The name is still John, but you'll notice the post is actually a script that has a bunch of bad code in it. So you can see the bad code script could do all kinds of bad things. But let's say it's written in such a way that it steals the session cookie from the user and it silently sends a copy of that session cookie back to the attacker. So when an unsuspecting user visits the social media site and comes across that particular post, the user's browser could run the script and the attacker would be able to steal that particular user's session cookie and then start to impersonate that user and do anything that that user could do. This could create all sorts of problems. Cross-site scripting is a big problem with web applications today, but there are things you can do to protect against it. You can do things like filter input based on what you expect. You can also encode data so that it's not interpreted as active content. You can also use security products like a web application firewall to detect and block cross-site scripting attacks. So you can see that cross-site scripting attacks are really dangerous, and that's why it's important that cybersecurity professionals should know how these attacks work and how they can mitigate them. Check out my InfoSec Skills OWASP Top 10 Learning Path to learn more about these types of attacks and how you can prevent them.